<laughs> see, the thing is, we are going and speaking by what we see. But we walk by faith and not by sight. So now you are believing God that the next time He puts 400 in your... In your the next time He comes uh, and gives you the paycheck, that 400, a zero will be added at the end. And then the next time, another zero. And the next time, another zero. How much is that now? 400,000. 400,000. Next time, another zero. Why not? Right? Why not? Another zero. See, you are speaking faith. But if you say, this is it, this is it, this is it, patay. Well, that's why. That's why. See? Careful with, can you imagine Jesus waking up one day and saying, patay. I don't think, I don't think so. See, death and life are in the power of the tongue or the mouth. It's in your mouth. Everything is in your mouth. Okay? You decide how your life is going to go. See, the thing is, the Bible says, guard your heart. Uh, let's put the whole thing. Proverbs 4, I think. It says, above all else, above all else, guard your heart. For out of it, what? Spring the issues of life. Every issue in your life is a direct manifestation of your words. It's a direct manifestation of your words. The words that you believe. See, now you can always say, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. And then you look at your wallet. I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. But walam pera. You know why? Because you don't believe it. You're just saying it, but you don't believe it. You still believe you're poor. See, it has to be the abundance of your heart, not the abundance of your words. It's the abundance of your heart. So if you don't like your life, change first what you believe. So that you will change what you say. And then your life changes. But if you keep on saying, Pambihirang buhay to. Well, that's what it's going to be. Pambihirang buhay. I don't even know what pambihira means up to now. Is it bad? It's bad, no? Huh? Grabe. Uh, you know, there's another thing we should stop saying. Grabe. What's grabe in English? Grave. You don't want to be there. Not yet, anyway. Right? Every time you say grabe, you say grave. <laughs> Seriously. I have a bad habit of saying grabe. But what I mean by grabe is like, whoa, grabe. Like, awesome. Well, say awesome. Don't say grabe. You know, say, whoa, grave. <laughs> Don't do that. You're killing yourself. Okay? Look at this. The power of life and death is in the tongue, and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. In other words, you're going to have whatever you say. That's really what it's saying. You're going to have whatever you say. But based on your believing. So you got to change first your believing. That's why we're called believers. See? The Bible doesn't really call you Christians. You're called believers. Why? Because you believe. The question is, what do you believe? We are those who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, in the good news of Jesus Christ. We don't believe in bad news. Because in the kingdom of God, bad news cannot exist. It just can't. There is no bad news in the kingdom. Amen? None. Look at this. Psalm 140 verse 3. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of asps is under their lips. They can't help it. Just poison. These are toxic people. And for the sake of your faith, stay away from toxic people. People who are grumblers and complainers can't say anything nice. You know, they're cousin all the time. I mean, stay away from them. Now, if you're married to someone like that, don't stay away. Pray for them. Okay? Pray for them. So hopefully you're not married to someone like that. Okay? But if you are, don't worry, because God makes all things beautiful in its time. Amen? You just got to hang in there and speak words of faith. Amen. Okay. Probably a clap from all those who are having a hard time in their marriages. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. See, the thing is this. 
When you find yourself in a difficult situation, talk yourself out of it. You talk yourself out of it. See? Don't say, this is hard. Just say, I can do this. I can do this. See? I can do this. Talk yourself out of that situation. If you're married to someone that's difficult, just speak words of faith. Just speak words of life into that person. My husband is prayerful. My husband is a man. My husband, you know, this and that and what have you. Speak it. He is gentle. He is tender. You know, don't overdo it. He might get too tender. Okay? <laughs> you don't want to do that. You still want a man. Right? You want macho. Not macho. You're macho norin. Okay? Not like that. Okay. <laughs> James 3, 5 to 10. I'm not going to talk too much on this. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. Look at that. You just said, tomorrow I'm going to be sick. Look what happened to your whole body. Your whole body followed that little member called the tongue. It has the ability to get you sick. It has the ability to get you well. And sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. Every time you speak a word that is an abuse, it comes from hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men. We have been made in the similitude or in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. It is not fitting for a Christian to cuss. It is not fitting for a Christian to complain. It is not fitting. Now the Bible says no man can tame the tongue. But I know someone who can. As you pray in tongues, as you pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, you'll discover that He actually begins to change you from the inside. Amen? Philippians 2.16 Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Do you know that when you hold fast the word of life, see you... The word of life speaks of the gospel, okay? And part of that is speaking words of faith, words of life. When you do that, your leaders rejoice. When I hear of the victories that you encounter and the answered prayers that come your way, you don't know how much I rejoice and how much I thank God for that. Because I pray for you. My wife and I and the pastors of this church, we pray for you. When you text us, you know, the prayer hotline, you text us, we pray for you. That's why text us back and let us know once you get the answer so we can also rejoice with you. Nothing gives me greater joy than to know that each one of you is walking in victory over your circumstances. See? It's called walking on water. That gives me joy. And let me close with this. Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. There was another verse that I was thinking of writing down. I'm putting up here, but... Um, I decided against it, but, but grace causes you to have an abundance of thanksgiving. It's the grace of God. And it will make the grace that is on you, when you manifest it, causes other people to give thanks to God. See, your grace is infectious. And because of you, people now start to thank God instead of complain. That's why the Bible says, let your words be full of grace. In other words,